Hello everybody, Neon here, uh, doing a balance update video for Underlords. We of course got a pretty big balance patch this time around. Uh, it felt like the first balance patch that we got with, uh, you know, well, messing around with like, like hunters, essentially. It felt like a relatively controlled set of changes. It was saying like, okay, hunters are a big problem, and um, we're gonna have to focus in on that and kind of just uh, make some changes there and not really mess with anything else. This feels like the first real big balance match. I guess both of them have been pretty big, but this one's pretty substantial. We see a lot of changes here, so I am going to walk through them and give you my uh, impressions on what all of this means. This is a pretty substantial patch in how things play out bigger than they even kind of let on on Twitter. Like, they kind of suggested it would be a pretty uh, substantial and far-reaching patch, but it feels like it grew far beyond that. So, um, very interesting to see how it all plays out, but I'm going to go through a few things. Obviously, uh, not focusing on, like, the performance issues, so I like, adjusted the game board, um, lighting and shadow to intensity tweaks, like, who cares? Sounds, yep. Uh, new opponent selection logic, yep. <laughs> uh, piece of mobile, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, so all those... Things. The first actual um, gameplay one, fixed units, oh uh, yeah, fixed friendly AI, not casting spells after Pudge hooked an enemy. I never actually noticed this before, but uh, it's good that they fixed it. Um, troll global item, according to assault, now stacked. That's really important. I would have guessed that it's stacked before. Um, I think that I want to uh, double check. Um, so give me a moment. No, so this is the coordinated assault uh, gives 25 attack speeds to allies one cell away. Um, I am curious as to whether or not the, it, like, does it stack means um, for each troll that's nearby versus um, for each, like, like, instance of coordinated assault. Like, uh, I, I don't actually know um, the details of it. So I think that this means that it, it stacks so that if you have multiple trolls nearby, it gives a lot more on attack speed bonus. So this could actually be pretty frightening um, if, if you're able to get this in a reasonable tr trolls build. I think the trolls are uh, reasonable, like they're, they're okay before, um, but this th this and the, the knight's buff together make it actually much more e exciting and interesting. So... Um, well, it's going to have to see how this actually plays out. I would wish that they gave more detailed patch notes and, and uh, mechanics notes of how these things work, though, because I have all these sorts of questions for it. But anyway, back to the notes. Um, AI, now cast spells on the ground. Okay, it's a minor bug fix thing. Uh, Dragon Alliance, now we're, we're at the, the good stuff. Now requires two units. So you only need two dragons in order to get your uh, Dragon Alliance bonus on line. This is a substantial buff because three has always felt so hard to do, particularly because they're in three very different directions. I think that the, the biggest different difficulty is actually getting Viper and Puck in the same deck. Like, very rarely do you want both in the same... Like, actually want them in the same deck because, like... Uh, in, there, there are two different sources of damage. You kind of want your sources of damage and your sources of defense to, to stack with what with themselves. So you want a, not li a lot of knights or a lot of warriors. You want a lot of mages or you want a lot of assassins or you want a lot of hunters. Like You don't want just like a mix of, of everything. And so that, that's one of the lessons that I would kind of have there. So getting Puck and Viper into the same deck just felt near impossible and would just add the clunkiness of your build substantially. So that that is a, a pretty big buff so that you could either go like a nice assassin's build and uh okay i haven't tried that or seen it yet but maybe there's a reason now to do it um well with this but uh then definitely a knight's mages build is is interesting so that is the so that requires two units and now it unlocks an additional ability for each one um we're actually just going to go through each of these uh one by one so let's let's go there so let's start with Dragon Knight, we have, uh, he now has Breathe Fire as his native ability, so that something just happens normally. Um, this is like a, a okay-ish nuke. Um, it reduces the attack though, which is actually quite interesting uh, for it. It, it's, it takes a long time to charge. You have to give him some sort of mana charge item to get there for it. Like if, if you guys have played level one Dragon Knight before, like you, you notice that unless you are playing Crystal Maiden or something along these lines. Like, he just never gets his ability online in time. 
and you have to wait to level two before he actually does anything. So, but having this burn ability now, this breathe fire ability now, is pretty cool. And I think it will actually be be okay. And then the Elder Dragon form is unlocked when you have that dragon passive, which shouldn't be that hard to do. And starting in dragon form should probably be pretty good. I once again, I wish I had the details as to what this actually, you know, means. Oh, right here. <laughs> I'm very smart and talented. Um, okay, so green uh, dragon. So they all have the same uh, stats, right? Because passive uh, dragon takes the form of one of the three powerful dragons, increasing his movement speed by 30% and granting him new powers. Okay, so he that does have the same stats. So attack seal 30, poison damage over um, per second um, for five seconds in addition to poisoning enemies uh attacks uh damage all enemies units one cell away the target 50 percent damage that's just basically just cleave and then blue dragon um that gives minus attack as well so this is the i think that the red dragon is going to be the one to kind of focus on the most uh for it because whenever you have a unit in your lineup you usually want it to be level two and uh this is substantially like this is very very uh, powerful uh, of a of a unit. It gives you a tanky boy who will also be able to um, deal pretty substantial amounts of damage. I expect like it seems like it, it would be a pretty good um, damage output. Like two thousand hit points is a lot. Oh, come back, Dragon Knight! Don't go anywhere. I'm not done with you. Um, DPS ninety two is not insane, but he's a knight, so you don't expect. Anything insane from him, you, you want to go put a, a damage item on him whenever possible. Um, attack range, armor, re health regen. Yeah, he also got the health regen buff too, so you go to 10, which is um, like, I think that, let's say that that adds an average of like, I'd say 100 health per, per battle ish. Uh, and you, you're going to notice that in, in, over the course of, of some of these battles. Uh, and I, I think it's easy to diminish the, the impact of health regen, but uh, I, I also think that the like breakpoints like that, being able to just avoid death, makes a pretty big impact. So that's going to be good. I think that you're going to notice him being very, very powerful uh, in, in some games, especially when he gets to level 2 with a reasonable quickness. Um, I should compare him with like Omni Knight, just some of the base stats. For him, Omni Knight. Okay, 700, uh, 1400 DPS, 39, 79. Okay, so he's a, like definitely you know, Omni Knight 1.5 here, uh, which is, I think, a good way to think about him at level one. Um, yeah, roughly speaking. But then also has the extra lines bonus, so that's quite good. So let's go on to Viper. Let's go from most expensive to least expensive, apparently. Corrosive Skin gives him uh, an infectious toxin that deals 20, 30, 40 damage per second and slows the uh, enemy's attack speed. Um, doesn't look like it stacks. I wish that we knew that for sure, but it doesn't look like it does. So I'm going to assume that it doesn't. And um, that's still pretty de a decent uh, damage output. Uh, for for third damage uh, per per hit, especially with, since you can get him, or like even twenty uh, per hit, like he'll this will deal noticeable amounts of damage. The bigger advantage of those actually, I think, the magic resistance. This patch ultimately is a fuck mages patch, uh, I, as I kind of predicted. I mean, that may sound like I'm like, hey, I'm so smart, I figured it out. Uh, no, this is a pretty obvious thing that we we're going to get some extra magic uh, hate in it because mages have been so good and or like shadow fiend also has been uh, really really good just blows up everything and wanting to have more tools to fight against that i think is pretty powerful and i so i think that um units like this actually i think that also puck falls into this category too we'll see that in a moment but like especially when you stack the the magic resistance where you have 30 percent from or like let's say 50 percent from his level two ability and then like let's say you also got the the, na the naga bonus from that as well like um unless they have some way to i have to like ensure this is exactly how it works uh because like there's two ways for to read it that could be 50% on 50%, which means that you 75% resistance, or it could just be 100% resistance, which would be fucking dope. 
in which case your opponents have to have a source of um, magic damage penetration in order to get through it. Um, I, th I think, yeah. He also has a, a native of 20%. Wow! He'll have 70% magic resistance, base rate, like no other special things when you have the Dragon Alliance. This guy is going to mess up mages. Uh, in that respect. So he's a really good uh, job at that. I think this is substantially better. Because that's like one of the things about him too, is he just always felt like he got destroyed um, before he was able to do anything. And the fact that like he gets the corrosive skin is going to be way better against uh, melee, even if he does happen to run into a team, like the, the opponent's like melee squad gets caught up in, in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that way, at least he'll be dealing some amount of damage to them. Uh, afterwards, assuming that he doesn't get picked off at the very end of the fight. So I think that this is good. I think that this is uh, a much needed buff to our, our Viper friend. He was really bad before, but this is... I think that this might make him not just playable, but attractive in some builds. Like, there will be some builds that you want Viper there. And then finally, Puck. We have... Um, passive just before taking damage, a puck briefly shifts into another dimension where he it is immune from harm for 0.5 seconds. This is particularly fascinating against these uh, mage heavy builds uh, or like like magic damage heavy builds because they tend to have big bursts of damage. So the fact that like if he's positioned in such a way where he's not going to be taking damage in that first uh, like wave of you know your, your front lines crashing into one another, um, maybe the first you know, bit of damage that he gets is getting smashed by the horses and uh, from illuminate or from like a shadow fiend ultimate, and then he can just you know avoid it. So that's really sick. It'll make him very hard to. Um, like it'll be very annoying in in those matchups. It'll be you know, kind of like hard to see how it functions, but that's something to definitely keep your eye on as a a useful way to counter um, those strategies. So I like the idea that dragons seems to be built as a anti magic tribe in some ways now, and you have some possibilities there to mix and match it. Um, I'm still not convinced about whether you ever want a puck viper. Um, Dragon Knight build. It depends on the individual unit qualities there. Once we play with them a little bit, I'll be able to figure that out. But he's definitely quite strong. Magic resistance here is zero. Okay. <laughs> uh, got, I got you, buddy. It's, it's fine, too. So, inter I'm interested to see how that ends up playing out. Because that also, depending on how this ends up kind of feeling, it might just end up being like, okay, he, you know, misses an arrow in the early stages of a battle. Like, who cares? About that, like there's a very, very minor buff in that case. For a second cooldown, though, it actually means it's gonna happen a couple of times per battle. I'm interested to see how these cooldowns look in the course of the um the, the battles. I guess you're not gonna see this one uh, going on for it. Maybe it'll just not be shown. Well, I'll I'll try and play it sometime soon in order to test it out. Four changes, though of all, of course, on the same theme <laughs> as uh, as the previous ones about fucking up the the mages. We have pocket sand up next. Now also slows mana gained on receiving damage by fifty percent. Uh, so pocket sand previously was really good against um, the uh, the hunters uh, and other. Well, damage based or like assassins too it was it was really good in the, like the mirrors um now it's much much better against the um the, the mages than it was before and um yeah you're really gonna have to position away from that if they have the pocket sand it's gonna be super frustrating to deal with actually and the, it will also debuff a random enemy unit that's within two cells if there's no units within the one cell of the assassin's landing. Uh, I mean, it was something that I did like pocket sand reasonably. It was it was okay um, for doing it. It just definitely was not was not great. I like pocket sand as well as a, as a combo because it does um, it feel, fit, fits thematically with what the assassins are trying to do, but it fits it, it helps solve some of their problems because they just get blown up. A lot of the time so i think that the, this is a reasonable way to 
meet some of their their solution like have it as a solution to some problems here are some big nerfs though keeper of the light illuminate now costs 150 mana uh this is an absolutely massive nerf to level one keeper of the light i think the key, level one keeper of the light uh, and then his, his health has decreased. I don't know how much by that, what his name and numbers were. It was probably 600, 1200, 2400, but that doesn't really matter. Um, like, I mean, it's a, it's a minor thing. But the big thing is that the illuminate um, mana cost going up. The reason why this matters so much, especially for the level one version, is that it, it, if you, I don't know how much you guys have played it, but he takes forever to fill his fucking mana. Even if you have only a, like a, a level one CM, you really need that level two CM for him to fill his mana with any convincing rate uh, as a level one, and now it'll just be like so essential. Even in the early game, he's going to be just absolute trash if you happen to pick him up early, unless you have an early C CM as well. Uh, Crystal Maiden is, is the big, the big linchpin. I mean, he was already the linchpin for the the deck, and it does mean that the busted Keeper of the Light builds should still have really substantial damage output which i kind of like basically what it means is that it'll be a little bit harder to get online and get really functioning and um kind of get over that hump which feels like a good way to exploit their vulnerabilities i i, I don't mind them being ultra powerful in the late game like you need to have some ultra power well, something's gonna be ultra powerful in the late game something's gonna be very good in the late game um now we have this as being a little bit less um a little bit harder to get to get there the desperate measures now also increases mana um i don't know why that was necessary since desperate measures was already pretty insane like any of the level five uh talents um perks were fucked up levels of good and this one is fucked up levels of good. I guess it just maybe this is a nomenclature thing about um, mana gain versus damage, and it just didn't work in previously that it was, didn't affect your mana gain. So uh, I don't know. Sure. We can intent now also blocks HP regen. That's really good because I assume that it blocked HP regen. The fact that it didn't is kind of upsetting to me. I don't think I chose it very often, even when I was um on an un uh uh the heartless heavy build because it just was not um this is the one that blocks healing by the way for those of you who don't remember and i should actually mention that for desperate measures as well um you that this is the for every five percent of damage that your underlord has taken you get an extra one percent damage bonus off of <clears throat> your unit so if you're at like 20 health for example that's 80 uh, health gone which means that so divided by Five, uh, 20? Is that right? No, 100 would be 20. So it's 15, 16, something like that. So you, you got like, like oftentimes when you get this in the late game, it was between um, like, like around 15% extra damage that you were, that you were getting off of it. And now it's, um, now it's going to be 15% uh, plus uh, damage plus 15% mana regen so it's gonna be ultra busted uh then yes yeah, so we're gonna uh, intend this is uh, you get minus your opponents get minus 25 healing 25 percent healing for each heartless that you have um and i i assume that it was mana regen as well because uh, hp regen as well because that was uh, that was the, the reason that you would get it i guess i don't know that's just really disappointing um scrappy alliance now provides eight armor and nine health regeneration provides double that amount if your starting army is smaller than the size of your opponents i'm going to check this one out so a random ally is granted a nine armor and uh eight hp regeneration interesting what was it before i don't think it was 10 and 10 was it 10 and 15 that sounds right. Um, I could probably check somewhere as to what the, the previous numbers were. Which they wrote down the previous numbers in the patch notes. That'd be that'd be helpful. Um, but this does mean that I think that you want to play for this some percentage of the time, like getting that double bonus off a of smaller army size, especially in those early battles where 
it's not that hard to be like, okay, well, I'm going to under level slightly and get an extra bonus. So it's actually going to be really good if you're in some position like, let's say, round uh, or just round four, where you um, get a, a an upgrade and means that you can't level there and you're against somebody who did level on on that turn and then put an extra unit in um that will be good in that situation the that caveat is probably not super important oh maybe one of the things you can do in the level six bonus is you go for a nine unit army because getting 18 armor, 16 regen uh, on your team is pretty stupid. Like, that's a lot of, of durability and survivability for your entire team. And the difference between 9 and 10, usually that 10th unit is about lo you know, locking in some synergies. And if you just build your... Uh, like, you mind your build around this function where you have to max out around at, at nine units, or assuming that, like, a, your opponent doesn't get the expanded roster perk. Um, you could probably build something like that. So you'd start with something like... Um, you have these the six, you need three more, so you have a Warlock to pair with the the, the Warlock bonus of, uh, of Alchemist. And then, like, Tide Hunter Medusa. That sounds pretty good. I, I, that, sounds, that sounds reasonable. I don't know. I mean, you, I mean, it's actually worth playing around with and intentionally not putting in your 10th unit. Especially since, like, your base of just these six is going to be ridiculously powerful. So, assuming that they're upgraded, of course. Anyway. Knight Alliance now gives a constant 15, 25, 35 damage reduction and an additional 20, 25, 30% when next to another knight. Thank God. I hated this. I hated that you had to always have them next to one another because it made it so like it's frustrating to position them properly. Like you had like in order for them to work. You had to position them just so. And that was a just huge pain in the ass. I think that uh, I, I've sort of come around to Knights being like okay-ish before this this change. Uh, they were not great, but they were like, they, they could do things from time to time. I, I was able to get a win off of a six Knight Alliance um, game, which was pretty sick. It was, it was a really good one. And um, but this change, though, I think will help them a lot. Because particularly in the early games, when you have uh, some of the early ones that are the best are Luna and Batrider. They don't want to be in the front line. And then you compare that you have that with Chaos Knight, Omni Knight, and Abaddon, which do want to be in the front line. So it was just this super... Um, weird tension where you had to uh really struggle to position things properly or like decide like okay do i have to put my luna in the front line in order for this to work like where do i position my bat rider for it it was kind of, it was really frustrating so now you'll have to be at least have some alleviation where you don't have to have it in that positioning in order for you to get these bonuses and 15 percent, for example like that's not that's not nothing 15 percent damage reduction is just a base is quite substantial and this is also an overall base uh, buff, too. I don't remember what they were previously, but uh, right now you're getting a 65% damage reduction when they're next to another knight. Damn! That's so good. It's so good, especially when you have, like, armor and you have regeneration and you have, um, like, magic resistance on, on top of that. Like, these are going to be really hard to kill. If you get to that six night lineup you're just gonna be ultra tanky you just need to find damage at that point and there's damage hanging around so you can you can figure that out like a three like six night three mage build sounds totally viable like you have puck um let's say puck uh lich crystal maiden something along those lines that sounds really good chaos knight damage increased from 
this to that. So that's a 15 damage increase at... So this is a potential damage increase at level 1, which is, I think, where he suffers the most. Like, he was bad at all levels, don't get me wrong. But level 1, he felt so atrocious. And I feel that for level 2s, uh, for, for 2 cost units, you care with their level 1s a lot because you want to put them in to beat up on level uh, on one cost uh, level 1 units. So this is going to be, I think, a pretty noticeable increase in the quality of the unit. And in addition to that, it'll also increase his mana regeneration because he's even more damaged. So that, I think, represents a substantial improvement to Chaos Knight and that he might actually be a playable unit now. Before, he was always just something that you fit in because you kind of had to like he was just a second knight or like whatever you you were never happy to have him in your lineup boots of speed now trangle boots you get passive 16 percent 16 health regen and 100 percent bonus uh movement speed. 16 health regen is a lot in the early game that is actually a ton in the early game this is going to drop off significantly in the late game which is fine but you can put this on like this is Uh, battles at the beginning of the game are fairly long. They're, it's not going to be hard to get it to like 20, 30 seconds. So this is a couple hundred. This is probably close to a VIP booster uh, on in a lot of battles in, in terms of how it feels in the very early game. It will drop off later on for sure. It will drop off substantially in the, in the late game. But I think that it's better than a VIP booster in the early game and you're not playing the VIP boosters either for their late game benefits uh, either i guess the the best combo is with unstable reactor but like that's not that's not good pipe of insight plus 50 magic resistance uh once the first enemy has 100 mana apply a shield that blocks 400 mana magic damage to allies up to one cell away once per battle like, I told you this was about fucking mages up. Like, this is about l teaching them a lesson, showing them they've overstepped the bounds, they have crossed the line, and, and we are not going to take it any longer. Uh, Pipe of Insight is here to, to drive that home. I don't think... I'm going to check what uh, tier this is. Okay, so it is a tier 4 item. Tier 4 is where things get really powerful. Like, the difference between Tier 3s and Tier 4s is super... Is, is huge. And then Tier 4 and Tier 5 is also massive. But Tier 4 is where, like, the the power level of some of these, these buffs, some of these perks and items are... Is amazing. This is one that will... <sighs> It's hard to know where it stacks up relative to the other tier four items because they're they're really good. Radiance, Radiance is insane. It's so good. Refresher Orb. Have you played this one? It is so good. Yeah, Radiance. I like. I'm starting to like, just fall madly in love with this one. Blacking Bar BKB. My boy. So. This makes it really tough of when you pick it. I mean, if you have, like, let's say that you're moving into the late game, you you are in the top seeds, you, or at least it's very clear who you were going against going into the late game. Like, who are the people who are fighting for third and fourth, and who are the people who are fighting for first and second? Uh, and how much mana damage do they have? If you're against an Assassin's player or a Hunter's player, um, this car, this unit, uh, this item, is embarrassing. If you are against warlocks or mages, this is very good. So I think that you have to be mindful of of that. This is I like this in some respects because it ends up being I think situational. Um, I would. It really depends on what else you're being offered. It really depends. Like I think this is better than most of the tier three stuff so if you're being offered stuff like it's got to be better than eye of scotty it's got to be better than um 
mechanism is definitely better than Wicked Intent. Uh, you know, font of creation also is trash. Um, like there are sets of uh, uh, like perks that you could be offered that, that I could I could imagine uh, coming into existence that you would just snap off. The pipe doesn't really matter what else is going on in the game. That you would take the pipe every time, and then there's other times where I could imagine that's just not even a competition. Like if you if this is in a pack with radiance, uh, it's pretty hard for me to imagine picking it almost in any build uh, for it. Uh, but like obviously, it could also show up with things like expanded roster and Chivas guard and desperate measures. Like these are not. Uh, th these things are busted. Like these are broken. Good. Like they they will win the game all by themselves for it uh in, in a lot of situations like it doesn't really matter what else is going on desperate measures will crush people pipe of insight is is not like that so given that consideration i think that's really interesting and it'll have moments where it is exceptional but i don't think that you should be thinking about this as an auto pick item for the time being so yeah okay going back well that's actually that's actually it so the last thing is there's a, a mobile fix so we can skip over that. Overall, though, I am very happy about this. I'm looking forward to playing some of it, and I'm also working on some, some guides coming up for the next little while. I was waiting on doing some guides based on this this patch coming out because I knew that this was going to be a substantial patch. It was bigger than I anticipated, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, so let me know your thoughts. What are the things that you are interested in playing now the, the, your opinions have changed on it like what what do you think about pipe of insight and tra uh, tranquil boots i would love to hear all of that i think this is really uh, a very very fascinating patch and there's a lot that can be done with it but that'll be it for me today and uh take care Thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you want to support the channel, one of the best ways is to check out our Twitch page where you can subscribe and you also get emotes like yo, trash, and pst. I'm hoping to bring in the cost of the trash and the pst emotes, but I need more subscribers in order to do that. You can also check out our Patreon, our Discord, and there's links to all of that below. Thank you so much once again for checking us out and hope to see you in the next video.